looking ahead. A distinct whiff of undeath to this place. <laughs> Curious. I can't say I've ever noticed the same about you, Astarian. Uh, my whiff is very faint, thank you. Nothing a little bergamot, rosemary, and a bit of aged brandy can't hide. It's the perfect olfactory. Set into the mansion's faded exterior, you see the faintest outline of a door. An entrance designed to provide the utmost discretion. The door pulses with a heavy, melancholic magic. Whatever lies behind it concerns the living and the dead. You sense it waits for the right words. It requires permission to open. The door shudders. It has no choice but to let you inside. Mystic carrier awaits. Awaken, little one. Flower as I know you can. with Mr. Carrion. Ah, yes. You were drawn to me. A wanderer, bearing the scent of death. You are familiar with the necromancy of Fae. I have heard the spirits whisper its name. Few books have the power to send a shiver through the living and the dead. Tell me. What did you make of its contents? Such a book is for those who make only the shallowest ripples in death dark pools. I inhabit the depths. Clearly these are not waters you know how to swim in. I would hate to be the one who helps you drown. Perhaps one day the book will reveal its secrets to you. Until then, they're best left between its covers. Unless you have any other business with me, I suggest you return to the domain of the living. The painter. Yes, I remember. He wanted to contact a tormented spirit. I gave him exactly what he desired, and for a pittance. Given the complexity of his request, his inability to follow simple instructions is hardly my fault. If he wanted his safety guaranteed, that would have cost him extra. It's quite simple. He requires an exorcism. I can provide you with the means to perform such a ceremony. But you understand, this is my livelihood. First, you must do something for me. Do not worry. It is of an earthly nature. It regards a conduit of mine, Thrombo, who has recently deserted his duties. He has not gone far, but given the sensitivity of his nature, I would prefer that he is not free to roam the city. Return Thrumbo's body to me, then I will give you what you need to cleanse Oscar of his spectral interloper. Had I thought you were the type to shout his name from the rooftops, I would never have offered you the job. Thrumbo is not alone in his ingratitude. He has led others in my service astray. Three of them, beggars and zombies alike. The others lack even Thrombo's modicum of intelligence. It should be no great task to wring his location from one of them. 
Then, with the spirits here in our witnesses, the arrangement is made. They will follow your progress with great interest. As will I. Come to have a go. Give it your best shot. An air of decay hangs over the stooped beggar's form. The same that tainted mystic Carrion's chambers. This is one of his runaway servants. Gold first. Then you can hit me. Charge too much, people hit you harder. Then they take the gold back. Besides, I've taken enough punches for free. At least this way, I get paid something. So, you having a go or not? Back for more? I don't mind. So long as you're paying. Carrion sent you. Shit. Don't think about trying anything. I'll fight back. He did. I suppose. I mean, really? Thrombo was going to get us a boat, but I haven't heard from him since. He must be somewhere near the water. I just hope he didn't drown. Oh, please. Maybe a few. Please, kind sir. Can you spare a few coins to me? Just when I think we've seen the ugliest things yet. Thank you for cutting those creatures down, truly. Gods know what would have happened if you weren't here. So, Hagen, they're not exactly in their element here. Why are they so close to the city? stench is unmistakable. Death, decay, despair. This must be Thrumbo, the runaway mystic carrion was so eager for you to retrieve. This is my spot. Go on, find your own. Mystic carrion? You're working for him? Oh no. No, no. I knew he wouldn't let us leave in peace. You don't have to help him. He's the one you should be after, not me. You've met him. How can you need more justification than that? He, he, he murdered me. Murdered my friends. Snatched us right up from the dark side and and made us these, these things. Monsters, fit for cutting and, and grinding and, and desecrating the dead. He constantly abuses us, makes us do the, the worst things you can imagine. There used to be five of us. My friend Dallas, he couldn't take it anymore. One day, I saw him drive a coffin nail right through Carrion's skull. Then another, and another. We thought he had done it. Freed us all. Then when dawn came, Talus seized up suddenly like something had got a grip of him. 
We ran to help, but he just exploded. I got so much blood and, and pulp in my eyes. When I look back, Carrion was just stood there, completely unharmed. If I knew that, I'd have tried to kill him myself. I know this is gonna sound strange, but I've been watching him, trying to figure it out, and I think he's a mummy lord. It's an ancient evil being who refused to die, who cannot die. I used to hear about them in stories, and I can't think of another explanation. After Talus died, Carrion blindfolded me and took me into a strange place. A foul and ancient place. Somewhere the living wouldn't dare to tread. Down there, he showed me a jar. Said it contained the secret to eternal life. And if I behaved, he would share it with me. I, th I think it was his heart. I'm not stupid. I know what he did to my friend. Gods, how I'd love to smash that bastard jar. That's how you kill mummy lords, you know. What? His right heart was inside of me this whole time. Get it out. I have to get it out. <laughs> safest place to hide. It's just bad luck I was discovered. I must be patient. My brothers need me. I shouldn't have wished to live in more interesting times. Seems simple enough. Don't waste a step. Awakening, little one. Flower and bloom as I know you can. with him the stench of Thrombo's disobedience. Hand his carcass to me, quickly. This is your preferred course, to change the terms of our arrangement now that you feel you have the upper hand.
try and manipulate one who makes the dead dance from his fingertips. Given his condition, I am willing to refund Oscar's original fee. But the torch of revocation is what you require to help him. Use it to destroy the painting of his self-destructive lover, and her spirit will be forced to vacate his body. With that, my debt to you is settled. Should you need any further consultations, you will, of course, have to pay for them. Enter, if that is your wish. Personally, I would advise you against it. of a swine. Come closer so I can rip out your filthy tongue. Stop this. I love you, Oscar. And I know you love me. It's your gold I love, Hogwife. But all the riches in Faerun would not be enough to make a life with you worth living. Oh, gods, aid me. He does not mean the things he says. You! Help subdue him. But be gentle. He's not to blame. <laughs> now, not that I'm ungrateful for your help, but... Wait. Your face is familiar to me. Yes, I've seen it before on Oscar's sketches. You're the one who saved him from the Zentarim. I'm getting rather used to it, unfortunately. Not long after the wedding, he lost his appetite, fell into dark moods. He started to avoid my company entirely. Artistic temperament, I thought, but it worsened. He became violent. Called me some rather imaginative names. I hesitate to say it. Something unnatural has taken hold of him. Oscar has been possessed. I used to be. Now I'm his wife. We married not a ten day ago. Things have changed rather a lot since then. I can't come within arm's reach without him trying to strangle me. And he calls me such vile things. It hates everyone, but it loathes me. It's not him. I know he would never hurt me. And I promised I would let no harm come to him. As you can see, I've already failed. It's obvious he needs more help than I can give. Please, you saved him once. You must find a way to cure him. Oscar's behavior began to change shortly after the wedding. He became withdrawn, working obsessively up in his atelier. I tried to take him some food, but I couldn't cross the threshold. 
It was as though the house itself didn't want me up there. Whatever this thing is, it doesn't want anyone going up there. I swear, it's in the walls. Watching. Swift as my feet can carry me. Who are you? Get out! Get out! Please, Carrie, my darling, listen to me. You brought me here. You did this. Do not interfere. He's coming home with me. Another one who wants to control me. He called me here, trapped me, pathetic little childish boy. I only wished to explain myself, to make you see how... No! Enough of your whining! Enough! Selfish, arrogant bastard of an artist! I wanted to be left in peace! And how does that help me? Or is it just to help him? Why does everything always have to revolve around Oscar Feveras? Oh, my sweet Carrie. What did I do to you? Save your tears for the ethereal plane. What are you saying? You're trying to confuse me. It's so hard to think. I don't remember. Carrie, my sweet meat. I, I just need to know that what you did, that it wasn't my fault. Why am I here? I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be. The spirit's aura flickers, changes. She is confused, lost. Dragged here unwillingly by a man who refused to let her leave. Fine. If Oscar wants the truth, he can have it. You were a fling, nothing more! My decision had nothing to do with him! I did this because I was so fucking sad! All the time. Oscar finds it easier to imagine a world where women kill themselves over him than one where they have their own bloody problems. I'm sorry, Kerry. I had no idea. But I... I was truly not to blame. No. You weren't. So you and your poxy paintings stay away from me! We're done, Oscar. Over. Now let me rest in bloody peace. Gods, what a mess I've made of it all. My sweet Ferelia. I've been a rotten fool, haven't I? And yet you never left my side. It will take more than a ghost to scare me away. Though I wish you'd come to me sooner. I... I'd like to stay. I, I confess I never felt ours was a marriage of substance. I rather thought you just liked me for my art. Throughout my ordeal, 
I saw how tenderly you cared for me. Even at my worst, you never left my side. Truly, you were the one who saved me. I'm so sorry, my darling. Please, before you go, I must pay you back. Come upstairs to my atelier. I promise you'll leave with something priceless. Immortality. Here he is, the hero of the hour. Brushes are oiled, the canvas prepped, and you... Well, you're comfortable. That's the main thing. So, shall we begin? Oh, not long at all. I've rather a good memory for faces, and I've been sketching yours since my return. I just need to add the final touches to capture that unique twinkle in your eye. So, are you ready? Wonderful. Stand yourself just there, and... And voila! <sighs> All it needs now is a name. Something to capture the spirit in which it was created. Perhaps not the thing you'll be remembered for, but a fine quality, nonetheless. Adds a certain mystique. I think. Please, take it in for a moment. It's not every day one's face is preserved for posterity. He really captured you. 